Hello everyone, I hope you're doing well, and of course Arnie does too. Now in today's video, I'll be going through five more of some of the largest freshwater fish in the world. But as I always have to say with these videos, this is just one in a series. And I've already been through 40 fish that are thought to be some of the largest freshwater fish in the world. And I have to say, this is probably going to be one of the last episodes in this series, as if I'm honest, I am running out of large fish to feature. But I have already started the saltwater version, and I'm pretty sure some of you guys can think of similar videos to do. So if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comments down below. And we'll start off today in the freshwater of China and Russia as we have the Kaluga sturgeon. Now I've already been through plenty of sturgeon species in these videos, with famously the largest being the beluga sturgeon. But the Kaluga does rival it in size and is thought to be the second largest freshwater fish in the world. But as I've said before, this title is a little strange to me, as a lot of sturgeon, including the Kaluga and the beluga, spend a large part of their life in salt water. But the Kaluga is known to actually spend most of its life in fresh water and tends to mostly be found in the Amur River. And in its fresh and saltwater habitats, it has an enormous enormous appetite, as just some of the species that they're known to feed on are pike, carp, herring, chum salmon, and any shellfish that they can fit in their mouths. But just like many other large sturgeon species, they are critically endangered in the wild, and this is mainly because of overfishing, as many species of sturgeon are slaughtered for their caviar, and because the beluga sturgeon is so hard to come across nowadays, the kaluga seems to be the second best option for fishermen. And this type of fishing is unsustainable, as females are only able to breed every four years, and even though there are international bans on trading the meat of this species, they are still being poached. And this is not likely to change, as Kaluga caviar can cost thousands of pounds per kilogram. But if they aren't poached by humans, they can reach massive sizes, as they're thought to reach a maximum length of around 5.6 meters, or around 18.6 feet. And at this size, they weigh around 1,000 kilograms, or 2,205 pounds. And to put that into perspective, that's around the same weight as a black rhinoceros, or long-finned pilot whale. So even though it's not quite the same size as its close relative, it still is a giant. But for our next species, we'll head to the coastal waters around the Indian and Pacific Oceans, as we have the giant mottled eel. Now this tropical eel species is one of the largest in the world, and it can normally be found in freshwater habitats that lead into the Indo-Pacific. And although they are mainly found in fresh and brackish waters, they migrate long distances to the open ocean to spawn. And as there are many different populations of this eel living on many different countries, there are thought to be multiple breeding sites. One of the known breeding sites is west of the Mariana Islands. And like many other eels in their family, the eggs hatch at sea and float on ocean currents for months before reaching estuaries, eventually migrating upstream into fresh waters. And when in their freshwater habitats, they are carnivorous, feeding on a wide range of food, such as shrimps, crabs, bony fish, and frogs. And like many other eel species, the females get bigger than the males, and they're thought to reach a maximum length of around 2 meters or 6.6 .6 feet. And at this size, they can weigh up to 21 kilograms or around 45 pounds. And to put that into perspective, that around the same weight as an Indian crested porcupine or a collared peccary, and that really is an impressive size for one of the largest eels in the world. But for our next species, we'll head to the fresh waters of Southeast Asia as we have Julian's golden carp. Now this species can be found across many large freshwater rivers and lakes, and can be found in Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, and Malaysia. And as you can probably tell from its downward facing mouth, it is a bottom feeder, feeding on shellfish, prawns, and aquatic plants. But most of its life is dictated by the seasons, as they tend to eat a lot more in the wet season. And like many other fish in the area, their life cycle is dependent on the monsoon rains. But unfortunately, like many other giant fish in the Mekong River and surrounding waters, they are critically endangered. And this is because Julian golden carp is a migratory fish, and the construction of hydroelectric dams stops them in their tracks. And I've had to say that far too many times in this series, as it also affects many other large fish from Southeast Asia. But they are also endangered because of another reason, as many natural areas are deforested so that cash crops can be grown there, and the runoff from pesticides and insecticides finds its way into the rivers. And this doesn't just damage the fish population, but also a lot of the prey that the fish feed on. And unfortunately, across many of the countries in Southeast Asia, legislation is weakly enforced. But this species does prove popular with tourist fishermen, so even if they do become more scarce in the wild, at least there'll be some specimens in fishing lakes. And although giants are hard to come across nowadays, they're thought to reach a maximum length of around 1.7 meters, or around 5.6 feet. And at this size, they weigh around 70 kilograms, or around 154 pounds. And to put that into perspective, that's around the same weight as a bighorn sheep, or a West Caucasian tur. So hopefully more can be done to help this species out in the future. But 
for our next species, we'll head over to the freshwaters of North America as we have the long-nosed gar. Now, I've already featured two species of gar in this series, but a long-nosed gar is another one that gets quite large. They're normally found in weedy, sluggish waters, and as they can breathe atmospheric oxygen, they can be found in many waters that prove uninhabitable to other fish. Now, the long-nosed gar is called so because of its elongated snout, and this snout equipped with sharp teeth is perfect for catching its prey, which in most cases is small crustaceans and other fish, with just some of the species on the menu being perch and sunfish. And like all the other seven gar species, they've existed on this planet since the dinosaurs roamed the earth, and a long time before most of the fish we know today had evolved. And even though the long-nosed gar can grow quite large, it doesn't even get close to rivaling the alligator gar. But surprisingly, it is able to hybridize with the alligator gar, with the hybrid taking traits from both species. But when this species does breed, the female will lay large sticky green eggs. And these eggs are actually toxic to many other animals. And when this fish is young, it's preyed upon by other predatory fish. But when it fully matures, its size means it's only really preyed upon by large fish-eating birds, such as ospreys and eagles. And of course, plenty of them are snapped up by alligators. But if they aren't picked off by alligators, they can reach some pretty impressive sizes, as they're thought to reach a maximum length of around 1.8 meters, or around 6 feet long. And at this size, they weigh around 25 kilograms, or around 55 pounds. And to put that into perspective, that's around the same weight as a giant otter, or a mandrill. And even though it's not the largest gar species in this series, I wouldn't want to be bitten by one. But for our next species, we'll head to the fresh waters of Africa, as we have the Abba Abba knife fish. Now this species has a huge natural range, being present throughout much of the northern half of Africa. And in these areas, it's normally found in slow moving streams and densely vegetated swamps and marshes. And in these waters, it's near the top of the food chain, mainly feeding on other fish and aquatic invertebrates. And even though the species has a very underwhelming appearance, it's hiding a very strong set of jaws and some very sharp teeth. And what makes this species especially dangerous is it seems to be quite fearless and even a little aggressive. As specimens in aquariums have been known to kill and eat every other fish in their tank. And even if they're kept with very large fish, they are known to take perfect semicircle shaped holes out of them while they're still alive. So if you did have one in an aquarium, I'd go very careful when hand feeding. And the Abba Abba knife fish is related to the elephant fish, also known as the Cornish Jack. And just like its relative, it is nocturnal and has very poor vision. So it navigates and hunts smaller of fish using a weak electrical field almost like a radar. And as it's such an aggressive and elusive fish, it's only really preyed upon by large birds, other fish, and crocodiles. But if this fish isn't taken out by other predators, it can reach a maximum length of around 1.8 meters or around 5.9 feet. And at this size, it weighs around 19 kilograms or around 42 pounds. And to put that into perspective, that's around the same weight as a four-horned antelope or a black wallaroo, and that's a pretty impressive size for such a mysterious fish. But that's about it for this video. As I said, I'll be making one more video in this series, so let me know your suggestions down in the comments below. And also, as I said at the start of the video, it'll be good to hear your suggestions for videos you'd like to see me make, so leave them down in the comments as well. But thank you for watching. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. And until next time, goodbye.